Hi, it's Sam here. And Edward. From Ashdown Jones. And we're here on another episode of Ask AJ. Phil's not around today. He's not. He's away. He's, uh, yeah, he's slumming it down in Birmingham. I'm sure he's having a fantastic day. Mm -hmm. Hi, Phil, if Hi, you're Phil. watching. He probably is watching. He can't, he can't miss out. He has to watch. No, it. he needs to be in the know. <laughs> Gets FOMO for missing out. <laughs> so today we're here to talk to you about what happens when you go on the market at the right price, or your house is at the right price, not you personally, or what happens if you go on at slightly too expensive. Yeah, too high. Yeah, and there's certain things that we see, certain triggers that happen when people choose maybe the wrong asking price versus the right asking price. So we've got our lovely TV mm -hmm. here. Nice Here's one we made earlier. We made that little chart earlier. And what you can see here is this is the money that you're gonna get for your house, and this is the time frame on the market. Now, if, you're, if we come round and we say to you, we would recommend that you went on the market at 500,000, and we give you all the reasons why, and you believe us, and you go on the market at 500,000, you think, yeah, I'll take some of Phil's advice, rare though that is, uh, I'll take some of Phil's advice, and we'll go on the market at 500,000. Now, if it's a realistic and a reasonable price, what you've got a chance at happening in the first month is what, Edward? So if you've gone a really surprised, you've got a high chance of getting a lot of initial interest in the house. And the initial interest gives you more... Viewings. And more money, potentially. Potentially more money, yeah. yeah. So you've got a little bubble of interest there that can happen above the 500,000. And it's actually your only chance, isn't it, of getting more than 500,000. It is, yeah. You're not going to get that in 12 months' time. No. You're only going to get this first bubble of interest. And that's because there's kind of like a... It's almost like a head of steam built up with people who haven't seen your house yet. Obviously, this is new to market houses. Mm -hmm. And um, and they think, oh, I'd like to go and see that house because yeah. we've seen everything else on the market and they're waiting for that new shiny house to come to the yeah. market. The new shiny thing. The new shiny thing. Yeah. People Everybody like new, wants. don't they? Everybody wants. Yeah. And then you get a little bit of competition and before you know it, it could even be on 550. So that is your one and only chance to get above the asking price, let's say, up to 550. Mm. If it doesn't, sell then, or if you go on the market too expensive, what happens is the interest kind of, change this, interest kind of wobbles along like this, and have you gone, you've gone, so let's say you've gone on the market 550, and you've gone, oh no, should have listened to Sam and Phil. Should have, always. <laughs> always. Um, let's reduce to the price they said. So now they reduced to 500,000. They think they're gonna sell, because now they're on the price that we suggest in the first place, but what's happened? What's happened over this time? So the market could change, it could slow down. Yeah, it's um, got, the house got stale. Other houses could have come on, but those potentially that were interested, yeah, are more interested in. Very true. So, mm -hmm. and nobody wants a house that nobody wants. Yeah. So what happens is your 500,000 is no longer really the reasonable and realistic price that we gave you originally, because it's now uh, been on the market five or six months price, which is probably less than 500,000. And you're really just chasing the market down. Mm -hmm. Because by this time, it's probably only worth, let's say, 550, uh, sorry, 450. And it could take, have taken you a while to get to that point. So by the time, you know, even 500 isn't working and you consider maybe an offer around the 450, you could be sort of over here at the 10, 11, 12 months mark. And we know statistically that a house loses 1% of its value for every month it's on the market. So 12% of 500,000 is about 50K. So you could have lost 50K by that time. You might feel like you've lost 100 because in your mind it was worth 550, but it was never really worth 550. It was only really worth 500. Mm -hmm. Now, there is a corollary. can't say corollary. that. Corollary. There is an opposite to this. Um, <laughs> which is that if you go on the market at the realistic price of 500 and you go, yeah, you've got lots of interest and we've got two or three offers. And we, this happened to us very recently, didn't it? Yeah. I had a beautiful house gone on the market that should be nameless. Mm -hmm. And uh, it went on at a good price. And we had um, nine offers, yeah. well, nine people offering Nothing. five offers, I think it was, in total. Yeah. And it went for about 5% over asking price, yeah. uh, which was tens of thousands of pounds. And three things happen. And this is something that happens frequently when a house goes on the market and then it goes, um, it sells for, for significantly over the asking price. Number one is what happens to that buyer that's, that's, that's offered to pay the top price? Gets booted. Cold feet. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got cold feet, so I couldn't show you cold feet. <laughs> we haven't really practiced this, sorry. <laughs> Put him on the spot. So one thing is they might get cold feet because they're thinking, 
oh God, I've paid tens of thousands of pounds more than it was on the market for. Mm -hmm. And no other people wanted it, but do I really want it that much? Yeah, they question themselves. Yeah. yeah. And they just, they just think, you know, they're going to have that little conversation when you're nowhere near them over a glass of Shiraz on a Saturday night going, oh, really, should we have done mm -hmm. this? Have we paid too much? Yeah. yeah. Are we going to regret this? Yeah. And they come up with usually um, an untruthful uh, reason to pull out. So we had this again recently. Yeah. Very insignificant reason for pulling out. And really, it's probably not the truth. It's probably one of several reasons. But the main reason is buyer remorse. Yeah. They just thought, can't really face going through at this kind of price. I'm just not confident about it. They got caught up in the moment at the time. Cold light of day. Don't want to pay that price. So the second thing that happens is, obviously we think, well, we've got four more buyers that really wanted it. We go back to them and what happens? They've looked or found something else or they've changed their mind. They were snubbed the first time around as well, weren't they? They were yeah. like, well, your offer's not good enough. So they don't want to go, you know, they're not going to say, oh, my offer's good enough now. They're going to go, well, if you didn't want me, we don't want you. Yeah, and I think they feel they hold maybe a bit more power. That Definitely. They can negotiate a bit more because we're now having to go back to them. Yes. To say, you know, this one's fallen through or pulled out. Plan A's failed, yeah. your plan B. Yeah, and then they feel they hold a bit more of the power. Yeah, there's a lot of psychology going on there, yeah. isn't there, really? Yeah. And generally speaking, none of the other, well, this on this occasion, none of the other four people wanted it. And that is very, very common. Mm. But the third thing that happens, um, which is frustrating sometimes for us, is now the owners believe that the value of their house is that over the market price that was offered by that original buyer. So all of a sudden, so let's say in this scenario, it is that 550. And let's say they go, right, well, now we're going to go on the market at 550. The issue there is you're squeezing interest and nobody wants to view. And if nobody wants to view the house, you've got no feedback, you've got no understanding of why people don't want the house. Yeah. And then you're just repeating the same old process again. And eventually what could happen to that is, again, you're going to lose that sort of £100,000 off, off the top price and £50,000 off the realistic price. So what's the moral mm -hmm. of this story then, Edward? Listen to Phil. And Sam. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> Listen to Phil and Sam and put it on, yeah, a, put it on the market. If do you know what? If if you put it on the market at too expensive a price, you will never know why you're not getting viewings. Mm -hmm. Because you could be blaming the market, you could be blaming the B word, which I'm not going to talk about. Um, you could be blaming all kinds of other factors, uh, but it could just be that the price is too high. If you put it on at the right price, or even let's say you put it on at too low a price, you'll know straight away because you'll get this big bu bubble of interest. You'll never be able to sell the house at too cheap because there'll always be people that want to pay more for it. Yeah. So if you're not getting interest, it could be that it's too expensive, it could be it wasn't priced right to start with. So the moral of the story is price listen, it right. Yeah, price it right and listen to Sam and Phil. Yeah. So thank you, Edward. Thank you. You did very well. Oh, thank Apart you. from a cold fit, I which you missed that here. <laughs> booted out. I booted out. I <laughs> think your idea was much better. <laughs> and we'll see you on the next Ask AJ. Thanks. Bye for now. Thanks.